Hello, everyone. And this is for our Patreon and our YouTube subscriber family. And this episode is going to be called Coppers in the Kitchen. And Phil, with some of his Italian recipes, he's, he's got his chef's jacket on. He's all ready for today. He's in his work gear. Phil, take it away, brother. Well, I traded in my gun and badge today for my chef's jacket. Uh, we're going to go over some real Italian favorite, veal cutlet parmesan. You can actually use chicken cutlets as well, same recipe, but uh, we're going to do the veal palm because we're always talking about veal parmesan on the show. So I'm going to give you guys a, uh, a quick, easy recipe on how to do veal parmesan, real Italian style. Billy, are you down with some veal parmesan? Oh, my God. I love veal parmesan, but you know something? It's so expensive that I don't eat it that often because it's 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 probably as about as expensive as shrimp, really, right? Yes, it's it, uh, a little on the expensive side for sure. Um, a lot of people just quickly will use uh, chicken cutlets. It's actually uh, just as delicious. Two different things, obviously, veal and chicken. But uh, special occasions like my birthday, that's my favorite meal. My wife will always make me veal parmesan. My mother used to do it when I was a kid. So uh, let's get right into it, Billy. Uh, did you? I, have look, I'm all ears. I want. I don't know how to make this either, so I'm listening too. <laughs> all right. Didn't you have to put something on the screen, though? A little uh, throwback from uh, a famous movie? Yeah, th this is one of our favorite uh, Italian restaurants. In fact, the best veal in the city. <laughs> Try to veal. It's the best in the city. Louis right. in the Bronx, but <laughs> All right, so let's get right to it. First thing you're going to want to do, you're going to want to have some tomato sauce ready. Now, if you don't have tomato sauce left over from Sunday, let's say, or you want to make a quick sauce, always I use a San Marzano tomato. Um, you know, you just chop up a little onion, fry it up in the... Uh, in the pan, you could use a pot like that white one right there with some olive oil, throw the tomatoes in, bring it to a boil, get it uh, simmered. You know, you could add your grated cheese, a little bit of wine, a tablespoon of sugar, and you got your sauce rolling. Next, you're going to take, crack an egg, beat it up, uh, crack it, beat it up really good. Wait, are we doing Jimmy Calandra's Bath Avenue uh, story show or is this police off the cuff with coppers in the kitchen? I thought, I thought you're supposed to take it in a whisk and just twirl it around. You got everything is beat. We were Italians. Everything's given a beating. <laughs> crack it first and beat it and beat it good because you want those eggs nice and fluffy. So once you got the eggs, uh, crack a few eggs, you got them in the bowl, throw in uh, a tablespoon or two of grated cheese. That's always uh, very important. When I use grated cheese, my wife uses grated cheese. We kind of cut, eliminate the salt. You'll take your thin cut veal cutlets. I got some veal cutlets here. You'll take them thin sliced uh, uh, veal cutlets trimmed nice, and you put them into the egg. Chop up some fresh parsley. We got a little bit of parsley here. You could chop some of that up, throw it into, chop it finely, throw it into the egg mixture, uh, swish it around a little bit. You got the uh, the veal cutlets sitting in the egg with the, the, the grated cheese, uh, the parsley. You might want to throw a little pepper in there. Let it sit in there for a while. You got your sauce simmering on the stove. Now you're going to take, um, well, when you use grated cheese, uh, th this is not the brand. Uh, th this is just a jar that we use. We use Milano's uh, Pecorino Romano cheese. Milano's is a great line of cheese. You can find it in any supermarket. Uh, that's the grated cheese that we use. Um, we're going to take some seasoned breadcrumbs, okay? I always use Four C's, a good brand. Uh, Italian seasoned breadcrumbs. It says Pecorino Romano. I always add a little extra grated cheese into the breadcrumbs, mix it in a little bit. So you're going to take your uh, your veal cutlets that were sitting in the egg mixture with the grated cheese and the parsley, and you're going to have a pan or a, a plate with uh, the breadcrumbs uh, laid out, and you're going to bread the cutlets. You're going to you know put lay them from the egg right into the breadcrumb, flip them over, and then you'll put them in another pan. Once you have all your uh, cutlets breaded, you're going to take a pan. See that frying pan right there? A pan like that, I use a canola oil. You could use a vegetable oil. I wouldn't use olive oil. This is extra virgin olive oil. A little too heavy for frying. Uh, you're better off with a vegetable oil or corn oil, or I use a canola oil. My wife actually uses a canola oil. And you're going to want to get the oil in the pan, get it nice and hot. You don't want it too hot because then it'll start to burn. You want it sort of like uh, get it into a high heat in the beginning and then bring it down to almost like a medium. Hey, hey, Phil, if it's too hot, you're defeating the whole purpose. That's right. You defeat the purpose. You don't want it too hot because then they burn and they don't cook in the middle. No good. No good. You're defeating the whole 
So basically, you're going to fry your cutlets. You don't want to overcook them. You want them till they're just golden brown, not too well done because they're going to go in the oven later. And you don't want them too cooked because then they could dry them out. So you give them a, a medium flame on the oil, get them golden brown, flip them over. What we normally do is we take paper towels, we'll put them on a dish. We take the cutlets when they're just golden brown, take them out, put them onto the paper towel to drain off some of the oil. You don't want them to be too greasy. So once you have all your cutlets fried up and ready to go, you keep them on the side, you take a pan, you take a little bit of that delicious tomato sauce that you had brewing for the last half hour or so, and you want to make a uh, coating on the bottom of the pan that you're going to use to put your cutlets on. And you're going to lay the cutlets out into the pan. You're going to add a little extra sauce on top of the cutlets. Then you're going to take, I like to use a polio mozzarella. Uh, a lot of people want to use fresh mozzarella. That's fine. I particularly uh, like this one better. It sort of cooks a little better. Uh, it melts a little better. It's a, um, I think it's better for cooking generally. You're going to use it in a cooking recipe where you want it to melt. It has a consistency that it doesn't melt all over the pan. It'll melt nicely in. Uh, so each cutlet, you're going to put a slice of mozzarella on top. I always like to add a little extra sauce on top of the mozzarella, then a little bit of uh, grated cheese. Now you're going to want to put your oven at about 375, have it preheated. You're going to throw the cutlets into the oven. Uh, you'll keep it in there for probably about five to eight minutes. Uh, once the mozzarella starts to melt really nicely, if you want, you can take it and stick it under the broiler just to give the mozzarella and the, and the cutlets a little bit of browning. Always, uh, that's the way we do it in the family. We like it where it's a little bit brown on top. You'll pull it out, just serve it like that. You can serve it with a side of pasta. You can serve it right onto a gutted out piece of Italian bread. Makes a beautiful hero sandwich. Veal Parmesan, Kappa style. Kappa in the kitchen. That's the way to go. <laughs> here's, what it, here's what it looks like. That's what the finished product looks like with a little penne on the side. Exactly. Yeah. See, uh, again, it was garnished with a little parsley. If you notice how the mozzarella on that picture, it's a little bit of brown. If you start to get that effect with the oven at 375, you could take it out. You don't need to brown it. If it's just melted, maybe you put it under the broiler for like just a minute just to get that little bit of a crispiness. It, it just seals in all the flavors. You have the grated cheese coming through from the cutlets and the breading. Then you have that other little sprinkle of grated cheese underneath the mozzarella and you have the grated cheese on top of the mozzarella. And the mozzarella is usually not too salty. So that extra grated cheese, that Pecorino Romano, or you could even use a Locatelli, it gives it a nice uh, hint of salt and all the flavors come together. I'm watering looking at that picture. It looks so good. <laughs> but uh, it's a real easy uh, meal that you can make. If you put it together with a little bit of pasta like you have there in that picture, that's – look at that. That's a million-dollar uh, picture right there. That, and, uh, Phil, this is if you have any leftover. You make yourself a nice hero. Exactly. You have, Oh, that's a beautiful piece of seeded Italian bread. Uh, what I like to do is I, I gut out the bread, and then a lot of times we'll just throw it under the broiler for a minute or two just to get it, like, toasted. Once you throw those leftover cutlets in there, you close that up, Nothing better than that. Maybe if you want, if you want to add a little extra sauce onto the bread, that's always a favorite of mine. Maybe even a little sprinkle of grated cheese. You're all set. It's an easy meal. I mean, it's really not that hard to do. Once you have the veal cutlets uh, cut thinly, uh, you, you get that egg mixture going with the parsley and the grated cheese, maybe a little black pepper. Uh, you bread your cutlets, you throw them into the fryer. The hardest part is uh, having the sauce ready. A lot of people will save sauce from Sunday or whenever they make a sauce, save a little extra on the side. And my wife will do that same exact recipe with chicken cutlets. I have chicken cutlets here. Uh, we're actually going to have chicken cutlets tonight. And, uh, you know, same thing. You, with chicken cutlets, the only difference is you might want to rinse them off with water. Chicken has a tendency to uh, collect uh, salmonella. So we, we would rinse them in cold water, dry them out a little bit, maybe on a piece of paper towel, then into the egg mixture. Same thing, bread them fried them just golden brown hey phil put them into the pan is is, is sal uh manella from brooklyn yeah i went to high school with sal manella he was a great <laughs> guy he was on a football team 
<laughs> that was the cheapest joke I've ever used in my life, but I it's, couldn't resist. It's funny because I always use that myself. Anytime <laughs> Salman El- I saw yeah, I went to high school with Sal. Great guy. I couldn't, res- I couldn't resist it. The other thing is everyone wants to know, Phil, what type of red wine are we eating with this veal cutlet? What are we drinking with this? Well, listen, whatever red wine you like, when you're using a, a meat, a red meat, uh, you're going to want to go with a red wine. I like a Chianti. I like something that's a little bit on the sweet side, not too sweet, like a sangria, just under that, something maybe in the Chianti family. I know you like, uh, what do you like, Bill? You like, I like Cabernet. A lot, you like a Cabernet. My wife is a, a lover of Cabernet as well yeah. when she's going to do red. Uh, with the chicken cutlets, I mean, because it's chicken, even though they say white with chicken, it's chicken cutlet parmesan. I don't. I wouldn't go with a white when I'm having chicken palm. I'd go with a nice glass of red. Of course, you got the sauce and the mozzarella and all of that. You really got the Italian flavors going. So I would definitely go with a red. Again, when you're making your sauce, we always add a little splash of the uh, red vino in there. Maybe a little, uh, if it's just the one can of sauce, maybe a tablespoon of sugar, less, a little less, half a tablespoon, just to give it that little extra flair. Again, that's not, we went over the sauce the last time. I think everybody knows how to make a sauce. And uh, this is really a simple recipe. It's not that hard to do. It's, it's a little bit of uh, preparation, maybe chopping the parsley is a little bit of uh, work, beating up the eggs, go right back to Jimmy Calandra on uh, Bad <laughs> Damage Boy with that one. You know, and, and you guys that are eating the veal cutlet, you have a little pasta, you have some nice red wine, you feel your stomach getting a little big, you release that belt a couple of notches, and then you say, get me a sniff to full of Sambuca. But make sure... There's three coffee beans in that sniff. Gotta <laughs> have the three in there, you know. Now you talk. God forbid. Well, let me say, God forbid. There's there's more than three. <laughs> no, that's bad luck. You gotta have. Uh, I think it's health, prosperity, and health, wealth, and prosperity. I think are the three with the three beans stand for. But the bottom line is, after you have a meal like that, a nice little cannoli on the side. Oh my a god! Black coffee with some zambuca in it, like you said. But in our next episode, we're going to talk <laughs> about everybody's favorite. In the Italian world, Zeppelis. I have a quick, good recipe. Real Zeppelis at the feast that you get every year. It's a little difficult. It's hard. It's a big process. I have a quick recipe. We're going to go over that on the next Coppers in the Kitchen. And uh, Billy, you know, I wanted to give a restaurant tip. Now, when you go to a restaurant, what's one of the things that you look for that's going to make the whole experience in the meal uh, exquisite and great? What What's one of the things? Give me well, something. That- you want you want fresh ingredients. Right there, Billy. You're right there. Fresh ingredients. Exactly. So a little tip when you go to a restaurant. Obviously, you're going to want quality food, but it's got to be fresh. Now, if you go into a busy restaurant, most of the time, the food is rotating pretty good. It's very fresh. But here's a tip. When you go into a restaurant on the weekend, let's say a Friday, Saturday, or Sunday, usually on Thursday, most restaurants will get their specials, what they're going to run for the weekend on specials. So again, If it's a busy restaurant, most of the time, the food is going to be fresh no matter what. But if you stick with the specials, usually the specials are always very fresh. It's stuff that they got in within the last day or so. And if it runs into the weekend, they're still pushing it. It's it's, uh, freshly cooked or it might be some special recipe. Uh, It's seasonal sometimes. They'll, uh, you know, Easter time uh, in Italian restaurants, they have a thing called um, pasta consad, which is macaroni with sardines because you don't eat meat on Fridays during Lent. So that that's one of the specialties they might fall on a menu that time of the year. Christmas time, there's different things, uh, usually a lot of fish and stuff. So uh, again, stick with the specials. You're always going to wind up with a, uh, with a fresh thing. And Billy, you hit it right on the nail. I always like to say, if you take good ingredients and it's fresh, you're usually okay. You're going to wind up with a, a good finished product. 100%. And you know something? Not only do I want fresh ingredients, but I want a waiter that washes his hands. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And at the at the end of every one of these segments, we're going to give a restaurant tip from our experience in uh, going out. My family, uh, just in our heritage, we always uh, had a, a lot of big meals on Sunday and stuff like that in the holidays. But we also became foodies. We like to go out to restaurants we love the restaurant experience. I won't say I'm an expert in the restaurant field, but uh, I've had plenty of practice if you look at my waistline. 100%. So, guys, all you YouTubers and our Patreon uh, customers, thank you guys so much for your support. And I think the least we can do, now that I found I got a chef working for me, we can do some of these coppers in the kitchen episodes. 
And I want to thank everybody. And Phil, I want to thank you for your uh, your recipe, Bill Cutler Parmesan. And I think if people don't follow this recipe, they're crazy. Absolutely. It's a good one. It's not that hard. Simple ingredients. Use the right stuff, and you're going to be a home run in the kitchen. Cool. Have a great day, everyone. Stay safe and enjoy the veal palm.